I'm going to start recording. I'm going to start recording. <clears throat> um, so this is being recorded. You'll have access to it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have it uh, up on my YouTube channel. Um, if at any point we are talking about something and you would like that for, for that to not be recorded, just let me know and I'll pause the recording. Um, so that way there, if we want to get into something that is, I don't know, you're just uncomfortable uh, having other people um, outside of this group witness, just let me know. Um, did, did you send all the stuff in the chat? Yes, there there is. Uh, so there's information in the chat, uh, just welcoming you here. And so basically, this is this is an experiment. So we are um, trying this kind of group for the first time. And the idea is we're going to do this probably for the next five months. Um, and then we'll see what happens after that. Uh, the difference is, so this is going to be primarily an inquiry group. So if you have... Um, if you have questions about the fetters, like if you're new to the to the whole system, uh, we can answer some brief questions about that, especially since this is the first group. Um, if you have questions about Pernilla's awakening curriculum and they're kind of short questions, she can answer a couple of those. But this group is focused primarily on actual direct inquiry, so actual experience in the moment. Um, so everybody is free to, sorry, letting in somebody else. Everybody is free to ask questions um, and we will dig into your personal experience in the moment and uh, do some guiding one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Pernilla is doing Q&A groups every other week uh, for specifically for her, um, her curriculum, uh, the Awakening curriculum for her YouTube channel. So if you have questions about that, it's better suited to um, wait for her group. Um, also, I put in a link, you know, if anybody doesn't know about Vince's group uh, or isn't a part of it and they want something, uh, he has a, a free group every Sunday, um, which is really good for just going and discussing uh, really, it's, it's particularly geared to people who are still working through the first fetter or just passed and need some integration work. Um, but there are people from all uh, all along the path who who kind of go and they they help guide and so it's a great place to get questions answered for all of this stuff um i feel like i'm forgetting something uh regarding that yeah it's also that uh about people being in different spaces oh yeah so this is a group that's open to everyone you know all along the fetters because we don't work really linearly and so there's a lot of times that, you know, even if you seem to be further on the path, there's going to be something that is going to have to be cleaned up or re, um, you know, integrated from, from earlier on. And so we are, uh, we are opening this one to absolutely everybody anywhere along the path. Um, yeah. And, and, my, my yeah, and it's, it's also the part that, um, because it's an inquiry group, um, your, your starting point in you is going to be um, from your own point of view. Um, we have a word in Danish that is uh, called nerve, and it's there's no translation of it. It's um, it's a word that means a very close intimacy with you. So it's a very um, it's a very curious place where there's no judgment of what is coming up, and that means that if somebody is if you are just about you know you're working with the first feather and somebody's asking a question and they're working with the ninth feather because you see everything from your intimate part from your curiosity point of view whatever we're talking about is useful for you as well and that's the the huge benefit with inquiry that it's relatable to everyone no matter what question is used no matter which way we are guiding into looking into it it's useful for whichever situation you are in um yeah yeah and it's also why this it, it can get very very uh close because we are asking questions um that is getting you closer to looking at at what is really going on yeah yeah yeah. And so we're going to try So I've done deep dive groups and I think I'm actually going to be starting a couple more of those. And on those people can talk for, you know, 
20 minutes straight and and a lot of things will come up and it can be very useful but because of our time constraints and the number of the people that we have in this group we're not doing it quite like that so that's why this is kind of an an interesting in between because we're we're staying out of the philosophical realm and that sort of thing and we're staying out of the like really 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 deep um introspection so this is maybe maybe <laughs> yeah we, we might have some, we might have a few of those um but but so this is this is going to be kind of a work in progress to see exactly how to to, to thread the needle and balance um and and also because i have had group uh, i've had groups in denmark uh in danish where we were like now 15 20 up to 40 people and that if, even that was possible to do it very very deep because if you're if you're ready and that is the starting point. There are no hindrances between you and seeing what is actually going on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All so right. I think I think that's that's and it's the... also the first time you and I are working. We're working this, very, it's... very differently. Yeah. But 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 very complimenting a lot. So yeah. that's also a test. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So welcome. Uh look forward to this. And um yeah, who would who I guess what we'll do is uh, whoever is interested, you can um, raise your hand. And then if you have a question, uh, just kind of maybe just preference a little bit about, because we know some of you, but not all of you. So if you could preface a little bit about where you are on um, fetters, what you're working with, uh, just just a very short little, little potted bio so that we have an idea and then we'll go from there. and I'll jump in at once. I'm going to go ahead and go. Uh, I know. I'm Noelle, and I'm from the USA. I'm from Texas, Austin, Texas. And I stumbled across to, I don't even remember, somehow online, on your YouTube channel, I guess. So I've been um, slowly, I've been studying non-duality just since 2018. So it's kind of new to me. But I was on a more uh, structured spiritual path, more like Vedanta and meditation um kind of eastern hindu type uh path for before that for a long time and um so i'm still working my way through the first feta i mean i, I got it intellectually mm. and uh i don't know i'm trying to say how to express this i'm I, my mind is starting to catch myself when like especially when uh, there's a little irritation or something then the mind starts going but wait you know what's really going on here and i also i've known about byron katie for a long time but i never really picked picked that up and used it but now i'm using that between what you're teaching in the first feta and then the byron for katie four questions so that i could undo uh the programming so i guess i'm going through a deconstruction phase is what it feels like now yeah so I'll let somebody else talk. Oh, and my name's Noelle. I don't know if I said that. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I was I was just yeah. thinking, Noel, if if you're okay, I'm I'm just curious when you say that you're that you're working with the first feather. Have have you seen that thoughts are just thoughts, and that the thinker is a thought too? Yes, but that doesn't mean that the the pattern has totally fallen away. The pattern's still there, but now. I'm catching it more and more and more. Is it the and pattern of it, thinking that, or the pattern, is it the pattern of thinking that you're noticing or the pattern of identification with the thinking? Both. Okay. Cause, cause I know, I know I'm really working on it. Cause I mean, I, sometimes I even like, it comes in my dreams and something will happen in a dream and I'm like, Hey, but you know, that's just a thought. It's <laughs> really I laugh the next morning going, man, this is even happening in my dreams now. So both. That's, that's actually really good. It's really good to start to have that have that become such an automatic pilot thing to recognize and have that distance between um, the awareness of the thought and the gravity of the thought or the stickiness of the thought. Mm -hmm. So are you finding that when you catch yourself thinking that they seem less important? Yes. Good. Yeah. 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 I just, I just want to say yeah. that it's, it's really great that, that this, that, that this is being brought up because um, a lot of people when they start meditating they have that oh but I keep thinking and I keep having all the thought and I don't want to have all the thought and I'm pushing the thoughts away and all of that and it's not really what we're doing in the first feta it's yeah. just noticing how much is there because when we start to fight what is we start to fight our thoughts we act as if 
they're important yeah. as if it matters that they're thought but just like you you hear sounds all the time you will have thoughts all the time just like you see something all the time you will have thoughts all the time and it doesn't mean that they're worse or mm -hmm. more intrusive or they can't be the only thing that can be intrusive is the belief in the thought yeah you know right. the, the belief that I, that's I have heard you know i've heard you say that and of course i started listening to adi shanti in 2018 so i started being exposed to that like oh because with my meditation group i thought i was supposed to like you know really almost stop, stop thoughts because nobody really addressed it directly like non-duality does mm -hmm. so that helped that helped yeah. the progress quite a bit it helped me kind of make leapfrog yeah the, there are two different things which are often kind of um unfortunately glued together so you have the meditation side of things where you can work to basically because you're 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 just relaxing you're you're bringing down the nervous system you're you're slowing down the brain function you can start to experience a slowing down of thoughts a lessening of thoughts you know more space and all of that and you can also during the meditation start to develop that kind of um you know metacognitive awareness where you're starting to put some distance between it and recognize that you're thinking However, that is not directly equated to awakening or what it's like living after seeing through the mm. self illusion. Um, you're still going to have thoughts. They're still going to be there. They're still you're still going to function. It's just you know, and there there might be times when things happen, shifts happen, and you do notice that you might notice that thoughts calm down for a bit or seem more silent, but really it's the um, lack of identification. Like mm -hmm. Pernilla was saying, it just, your thoughts are basically just like a TV running in the room. You don't have an identification with the words that are coming out of an actor's mouth. You just, you can hear it. You can recognize it. You understand what they say, but you don't believe it. You don't take that to be, oh, they're actually talking about me. If you do, you know, there's, there's, there's a problem. We consider that to be a problem. So, um, what we want is to just recognize with our same sense of detachment that the thoughts going on in the head are no more personal or um or real mm -hmm. than you know the fictional words coming out of an actor's mouth on television it's it's so. actually a really good metaphor that you have there that 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 you don't need to act on it it's the thoughts yeah. are not talking to you yeah. just like the tv screen the actor when he says run you're not running anywhere because yeah. you you know it's a tv so there's no, you don't need to act on what the thoughts are telling you. Um, if you need to act on it, like jump to the side because a car is coming, then your reflexes will take care of that. There's not so much pondering about it anyway. Well, so what's happening with me, and again, it's because I just recently found you. It sounds like a lot of these people might have already known about you. And I mean, I really recently found you, like maybe within the past month or something. And so I've been going through the fetters on the weekend, but I find like this kind of, two thing happening so there's the thought thing like what you're saying if i have a thought i mean i'm having thoughts all the time but thoughts that are sticky that kind of catch my attention you know i kind of work on that with the four questions and really looking at that like there's not a there's no noel here that's just a character it's made up of thoughts but the other thing that's happening is the sense of no self starting to uh come on board and kind of like these little satori moments like i realized oh great if there's no noel here <laughs> like <laughs> all the governments you know they're not they're not really doing any things things are just happening there's not like this evil government or this evil policy because if things are just happening here in this life experience then things are just happening everywhere so it's kind of that's kind of going on it kind of goes localized and then out and localized realization at a local level meaning in this for lack of a better word, character, and then realizing, well, wait, if that's true here, that's true everywhere. So that's kind of where I'm at. Amazing. Can, can you describe a little bit more about when you have it localized here, what, what the difference is between your sort of normal Noel life? I need to slow that down because what happens is you know, I work. So mm -hmm. when I work, I'm just working and I'm just in work mode. And so it's when I have like a kind of pull out of work mode, because that's a focused mind, right? You're having to work and read emails and da da da. Uh, so I guess it would be when I'm just more uh, relaxed and open. And I could feel, I could, 
it's I want to say my mind, but it's more than my mind. It's a sense of something. I don't have a word for it. I, I'm starting to experience it like an aperture on a camera where it closes and I'm starting to become more sensitive to where I'm having a, um, it'll close if I'm focused. That's normal, like focused on work or I'll feel a contraction. Like if there's, I become attached to a thought or a, or a judgment about something. Like I just read something in the news, the judgment, I feel the contraction Mm -hmm. And then the uh, experience of like a no self is more when the aperture is open, but that's the best way I could put it. It's open and it's just kind of relaxed. Nice. I'm not trying to make it relax. It just is kind of like relaxed. Yeah. That's a really good, that's a really good metaphor for it. And And it's also a really good place to be. Just keep doing what you're doing. It really sounds great. Yeah. really does. Um, I'm somebody else talk i feel like i'm taking too much time no 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 i mean that's this is what we're here for but but wonderful thank Uh, you sorry sorry actually before i let you go just one quick thing (laughs) just just notice i just want you to be aware so when you talk about the contraction and feeling that you know the aperture being closed i want you to um get as as finely tuned a view of what it actually is that you're experiencing that feels like the aperture is closed. Is it specific bodily sensations or is there, is it specific things happening in the body, which feel more tense? Is it a mental image that you're noticing in the mind? Is it some sort of distinct coloration of your view? Is it literally the, the focusing of your visual space to something more narrow versus expanded when you're having that, that sort of no self, more expanded view, feel into the body. Is it that literally there is less feeling of a body, that literally there is less contraction happening in the body muscularly, um, that you actually have a wider range of vision? I'm not saying that any of this is or isn't, but in I would like you to just explore that and see if you can really get finely tuned on what the difference is between being... Um, in the contracted aperture versus the open aperture. Cause I think there's a lot to be, mm-hmm. a lot to be discovered there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Good point. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Next. Yeah. And I, I just want to say that pointer is actually relevant for everyone. It really is. Yeah. That's yeah. so much of what we do all throughout the fetters is actually exactly really, that really being extremely yeah. clear about our experience what's physical, what's mental, and don't take anything for granted as the concept that we initially label it as. It's so easy for us to experience Mm. something and just say, oh, well, it's like this. And then that becomes the label through which we, or the Mm. filter through which we see it. And so we are stripping off all of those, even our convenient metaphors that make conversation so much, well, not only easier, but possible. We strip that away to get down to the absolute raw experience, which shows what's really there. Yeah. So um, I have a, I'm not sure how how you put your hand up on Zoom. I never learned that, so I just put my hand up. Um, (laughs) You you go to, it's, it's fine to jump in, but just to let you know, you go to reactions and then there's a little raise hand thing. Oh. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I, I wanted to know that for years. <laughs> Perfectly fine to jump in anyway, though. But... Um. Oh. Okay. So. So it's it's interesting. Um. Just following on what you were saying and what I notice here is um that when it seems like everything's very relaxed, then I look into it deeper, and then I see that by that like there's a total or like almost everywhere um and it but it moves but at the moment i've been sensing it very much in my thighs and sort of like up to the second chakra huge tension underneath it's like there's a buzzing of like electrical yeah buzzing stimulation contraction um and it seems like there there's the layers of it it's like layers that have to let go little by little and it's like so of course I always have um Penilla's um can you be in a body sensing those senses and yes yes and then there's another thing saying okay yes but there's still you know at the starting point of feeling that the world is like 
something's going to happen and I got to be on the card. And so it's a sort of an interesting um, situation that I find myself in because often there's that feeling of like on guard, something's going to happen one way or another. And I just have to, like, I'm waiting, you know, I'm in a sort of like a waiting area holding. Mm. No, yeah, yeah, oh. you're going. Go okay. So, <laughs> so, so, well, a couple of things I just wanted to clarify. So, um, a few things came up all at once there. So are are you feeling like that, that sense of tension that's there, that sense of contraction that's there? Um, is it, is it anything but a sense of, you know, contraction in the body or is it, is it that you're, um, you know, equating it with other more traumatic things in the past or more, I, I just, I'm, I'm curious when you, when you brought it up, I wasn't sure exactly of the context of the sensations. I can't equate it with anything in the past. Um, it has gone through times where it feels like fear. It could be a label of fear, but that can be like, um, you know, even sort of going up to the diaphragm area, some sort of sense of nausea. But but often it's like that passes and it just goes back to it's. It just seems like if I could give verbalize it, if I needed to verbalize it, it's like something's going to happen. <laughs> type of like just being a, an on guard feeling and um yeah of course yeah that's that's always seems to be present here um what what i'm hearing what what you're saying when we have that when we have that feeling that you know i'm really really relaxing but there's like an alert on the back it's because your your entire nervous system is waiting for the other shoe to drop and the foundation of that the, the starting point in that is fear so there's yeah. There's yeah. something there's something to look into. Um, and then I would recommend what that I know what Todd is gonna say in a second, that um for you just just to be with that idea that something can happen, that you can you you know, that 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 you are in danger, that something are um threatening your existence. Because it's just it's just an kind of like a thought that is so distant that we're not even recognizing it at, as a thought yeah do you know what it I well, um i think i i did mention once before um you talked about body dynamics um and i went on and i was really interested and i i very much related to that um for the first level of you know before uh, uh, yeah. still in the womb to three months old that yeah. something there, then that was my starting point when I came into the world. Yeah. I don't, with that, I mean, okay, that's we're making it into a concept and whatever, but it's, it's not, it's just so non, um, it's non verbal. There's nothing yeah. Yeah. that I can relate to it except that that's, it's just there. It's, I, I really like that, that you are aware that, that we are making it into a concept in order to create the space where we can have compassion and love for the situation i really love that you are aware that it is a concept um because then then you can be as you say relaxing into the into the second chakra and you're just in the hara and just being there um and when you feel that jolt of a fear coming up about you know the second shoe is gonna drop then just stay with that if the second shoe drop and when it drops i'm right here I'm right here. There's there's nothing that is determining that I can't manage what will happen. So far, my life has shown that I can manage. I'm still here. So the 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 fear of the second shoe can be there. It's okay. I can be in a body where that fear is. I'm right here. Thank you. Really good. Do something to add? Um. I mean, I think that was actually really, really good. <laughs> um, uh, I was uh, one thing I was just a little bit curious when I mean, you said that, you know, you were with the sensations and you're just with the sensations and then they kind of like, there's like another layer underneath it is how you put it. Is it that the sensations were actually just changing and you were being aware of the, the, the changing dynamic nature of the sensations or did it seem like there was actually something else underneath it? I think more what you're saying it was just um because it was changing i was and then the, some areas were softening i think it, yes I, I think i guess it was the way that i was 
um, just perceiving it. But yeah. but what you were saying is just basically it's all it's just changing. But there is this underlying, um, but it can move. Yeah. yeah, it's it's um it's sorry. No, no, please. Um, it's it's really um. I love that this is being brought up because when you when you start to, and that's for everyone. When 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 you start to look into that you have an assumption about something, you have a thought about something, and that creates a sensation in the body, then what we do tend to do is to keep the label on it. So Mm -hmm. something happens and I feel fear in my body. Then we tend to keep the label about fear. Absolutely. But when you detach the label of fear, you have a sensation in the body and that sensation keeps changing. Yeah. It we only maintain the idea of fear when we maintain the label. As soon as you yeah. detach the label, the sensation change. And that, like Ravina is talking about, can actually be quite scary because you you realize that there's nothing that stays. Everything is changing all the time. It is impermanence. Every every single moment is impermanence. And that and we become aware of that when we detach the label and completely detach the ego connection with it. Absolutely. So it's just that that pure floating in nothingness <laughs> that, that there's nothing holding on to anything and it's yeah. just like complete vanishing into into it. And that can be quite daunting. Yeah. Yeah, and that was... Yeah. Oh, go ahead, sorry. No, there's just something else came to mind that, that this state, because working with... Um, you know, with a gap and with, but this is reactive state. I mean, in a way, so it must be reacting to, in reaction to some other sensation, but that that is not yet able to be, I don't know, I'm just thinking about that, that that's not able to be accessed. Like the, cause when, when, when doing the like four and five, um, and getting to initial sensations of reaction to something that you know you're reacting to something and then you get to the initial sensation you know there's absolutely no reason to react at all there isn't anything no identification and i'm wondering if this even though it's a sort of starting point very base one could also be you know there could be a curiosity that this is also a reaction to something Notice, especially if there's reactivity or, or aversion to the sensation of being oh. um, waiting, you know, being nervous, having that that ever present anxiety of waiting for the other shoe to drop. If you notice yeah. that there is, uh, I really want that to go away. Well, there there is then some aversion there to be looked into. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, but yeah, and I also just. Like, because I was just piggybacking on what you had said there. Also, pick, thank you. <laughs> no, it's just an interesting thing. Also, that when you had said about there being, um, you know, the this that ever present sensation in the body, and as Pernilla said that you know it's like the nervous system is amped up and waiting for the shoe to drop. Even that we take so for granted that the feeling of having your nervous system amped up is a feeling of anxiety, mm-hmm. and yet again, it's not. It's just this energetic state of the body. And so even removing the label of that and seeing it just as it is even takes away that that concept that it must be that I am waiting for something else mm-hmm. to happen. And, and because really we can always come back to right this moment. If you are anticipating something else coming, it's not here. It's something that is not currently here in the moment. So you a don't have to be concerned with it because it doesn't exist it's purely fantasy and you know since we have this thing that you know now is the only time there is no actual future all of the anxiety stuff is additional mental labels being stuck on top of what is just purely an energetic sensation in the body that's being felt Mm -hmm. everything else beyond that is just pure pure mind-made fantasy Yes, true. Yeah. Still feels very real, yeah. but yeah, it's really yes. going yeah. going dismantling it as Pranola was saying and, and removing that and just seeing it more and more just purely as it is and not even letting those really those really subtle layers get attached to it as you know the 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 uh, the basic ones like you know, well, this is a state of you know nervousness because of or whatever. Mm. Yeah. Love it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you.
Anything else? No, not here. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy that you just spoke to this. Thank you, Rowena, and for your answers. Um, because I noticed the locus of this for me is in my pelvis and the top of my legs. And as you were talking about it, I just stayed right there and then used all of your words to guide to, you know, just do a inquiry. You just at the sensation level. Yeah. And I've heard so often this bit about nervous system regulation. Oh, you're not regulated. You need some things. So then I attach this, there's something wrong. There's something that I need to do about it. Yeah. Yeah. I need to regulate my nervous system. Hmm. something like this, but when that suggestion of just basically not doing anything about it and can I be in a body? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is so helpful. Didn't taking, taking off. Oh yeah. The, and this really arose for me recently where I was like totally put in the hot seat because, and some of you have been here or I've met you and I've already said this, but my cat recently, was lost and is missing and isn't coming back oh. and really strong sensation with, with that very strong. And I, I saw that this whole thing was ba basically, I was saying to this sensation about the sensation, it was like a combination of, I don't want this some kind of no, but then also if, if then if only I could, if, if I could just, and this is what I feel like it's what you're saying, Rowena, if, if I could just, if this could just relax, if I could just take that step towards her, my cat, or just take, this feels like there's some sort of step. And then Fernelli, you're saying something about a shoe dropping, like, what does this have to do? And, and then I just allowed that to just be a question or uh, okay, that's more words. Now I'm setting it up as if there's so again something that needs to be done. If I could just take a step, so then I just, I guess, peeled that one off, and then it was what, and then it is. It was just like it turned the sensation changed, and it went from intolerable label to tolerable. But what seemed to be intolerable about it was just that there would be nothing. Mm -hmm. Just. It, not even like if I could take a step closer to her, my cat, um, there'd be no cat, there'd be no me, there'd be no step, there'd be no, just none of that, any of that makes any sense anymore. There's just no anything. And so then the whole thing, then there just wasn't any words that I was working with anymore, or even necessarily any sensations. Mm. So um, it's just very helpful for, I guess, framing what's going on or how to work with just mm. again how to work with the, 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 there's a lot to be said about about psychotherapy and therapy and and looking into into trauma and i'm i'm a huge fan of looking into all that is shaping that is shaping our perception and that has shaped our perception i'm, I'm a huge fan of it but we need to be very careful with the ego not being in the driving seat of it because that is a never ending game. It's always a plus one. There's always something next, just around the next corner. And if I learn this, if I figure this out, then I will be happy. So the, the, the future thoughts about things is going to be better. The, the, the ego is always promising a future that is better than, than what is right now. And that's the danger with therapy and with everything. It is that we, we we are led to believe that anything but this is better and can be better and it can't it can't it's perfect as it is right now for for what is what is useful for it's perfect right now no matter what you're experiencing so it's it's that odd combination of creating space of trauma has happened and has influenced our personality and our perception and all of it but not making it into something it's not. It's the seventh feather, creating something out of nothing, which we're doing with, with our trauma. Yeah. yeah. So thank and you for that. Terms, 
Thank you. In terms of like working with this and just keeping on deepening and like kind of organizing how I work around everything, like you just said, okay, this is seventh better. Do I need to know? I think that you said in the, say your name and say what you're working with and where you are in the process. But I just kind of assumed this was four or five. Like there's something that I don't want. I mean, I just, I kind of recognized as many fetters as I've wrapped my head around, I kind of recognize all of them in that one predicament of just like, okay. It so is. I couldn't assign, okay, I know that I'm working with this fetter in this situation right now <laughs> as I'm feeling my leg, pelvis, cat, <laughs> death, face with death, impermanent scenario. Do I need to know where I am? Like what I'm to navigate it successfully or to, yeah, to organize how I'm working. You? Well, I would say uh, you're right. There are so many things in there. Um, <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> so, so there are only a couple ways that we tend to work with all of the different fetters though, practicality speaking. So in terms of, you know, what you're doing, you're recognizing, yes, that this does come down to kind of, basic fears of the fear of death, our own mortality, dealing with impermanence and all of that. Um, it, it might be useful for you, I would say, and feel free to throw in anything else too, to, um, to, to consider working at it from a couple different angles. Mm -hmm. So for one, you have emotions that are rising, which is perfectly normal. So we're, one thing I want to make sure that everybody is always aware of is that we're not trying to extinguish feeling emotions. So when somebody dies, you might still feel sad about it. Or if a cat goes missing, you're still going to feel sad. It's not about becoming completely emotionally numb and never, never feeling anything. It's, there is an identification with, and because all of the fetters are about identification. So there's this when we're talking about four and five, there's this level of identification with really not wanting something or really wanting something. And so you feel the sensation of being mourning the cat, feeling grief, feeling concern, all of the things that come up. But those are those are just the base sensations. It's the um it's the aversion that you're recognizing to, well, I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to be sad. This is, this is really uncomfortable. I would rather it not be like this. And then also all of the other things about, um, you know, how this leads to mortality and all of those things. So you can use, I presume you're doing the Fetter 4 or 5 inquiry, right? Like you're familiar with uh, st sitting in the gap and looking for reasons to react and all of that. Have you been, have yeah. you been practicing that way? Yes. Yeah. So have you used this situation in that regard? Yes. Well, it just, what I came across in this situation is that nothing's going to get me out of this, something like this. And all the emotions are experienced. I just let myself rage. I let whatever I raged, sad. I don't want this. I don't want this. <laughs> I don't want this on and on. And it's still this, nothing's going to get me out of this. So what exactly is this? And that's just, just, just literally being in it, like no escape. And then in that, I could just feel the finery of what all that is just at the sensation level. And then that it's futile to it's just like everything's futile, every attempt at anything. So that kind of revealed, it's like the, the fetter gets revealed to me more than, or something like this, like, um, it just brought me to a place where, I don't know if this answers you, but brought me to a place where I could just see it's incredibly uncomfortable and anything that I do is a movement away from this. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's, precisely fetter four or five, or if that's, um, so is there, it wasn't even, a, is there a need to react? It's that every reaction is futile. There is nothing that's going to manipulate this. I can't manipulate this. And that's why the teaching was so 
this situation is so powerful because maybe other situations I'm still deluding myself that I can do something or something like this. This was just like, this is it. Um, so you may as well just be here. I'm a, yeah. I'm getting an alarm about, about bypassing mm. that, that as soon as you say that every emotion is futile, so why feel it? Be careful that you're not bypassing because every emotion is also important. It's the attachment to the emotion that is, you know, what we're releasing. We're not releasing the emotion. Um, mm -hmm. We're releasing the attachment to the emotion. So if you, if you attach something to the emotion, that is, it's the attachment that you look into and release with the four five. It's not the emotion. If that makes sense. I think so. So when, what I began to notice is and the motions are actually are, are coming less now, but or they like last less long maybe, but the emotions are still there. It's just that it's seen that they don't do anything mm. as in it's not going to get me out of something or maybe there was a belief in that. I don't, I don't really know. Can you be more um, specific about when you say the emotions, which emotions we're talking about or that the emotions are going to get you out of something? Cause are these spontaneous occurring emotions when you are, sure. or, or sure. Are I'll walk emotions into the room. reactions? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'll walk into my room where she normally would be. And then I see the other cat and I'm like, and it's not her. And then I feel this flash of like, mm -hmm. I don't want this. I hate this, you know, and then, okay. And then mm -hmm. I picture the coyotes and then I'm angry at the coyotes. So then, and then I feel, so then I feel anger and I feel like queasy and I feel sad and I feel, um, queasy, angry, sad, like just combinations of it all just like, Oh God, I really don't want this. And it's this and sad and sad and sad. So I feel like it's all being allowed. But. Yeah, let's see if there's a but. It, it the, felt, the, felt the like there was definitely but. a but there. It's definitely is a but. A, is it a yeah, but or an and? I can't tell. No, no. Well, and, and is just a fancy way to avoid to say but. <laughs> but or and, I can't. No, as as long as long as you cannot send full love and compassion to the coyotes, there's still something to look for. Love and compassion to the coyotes. Yeah. As long as you're not able to do that, there's still something there and there's still something for you to make space for and love and have compassion for in you. I think you're rushing the grief process. Mm -hmm. I think you're rushing this to get over because it's very, very uncomfortable to be here. So, and I understand why you were rushing. You know, we're rushing to get out of it, but that's where the bypassing comes in. And as long as you can't send compassion and love to the coyotes that are in your mind right now, the reason why you feel pain, they're not. Do you see what I'm pointing at? So it's entering the room, it's entering the room, feeling, seeing the other cat. You even call the cat behind you for the other cat. It's not the first cat, it's the other one. The yeah. first one is gone and the other one is there, which makes the entire picture into a missing cat picture. Allow yourself for that to be the case. You haven't... You, you, you need to grieve more. You need to create more space for, for, yeah, for the emotions coming up and not be too quick with getting it over. And can you say the part about the love and compassion for the coyotes? Again. Yeah, you're not you're you're not there yet. You're not there yet. I don't want to talk about that. You're not there yet. As okay. long as you think that the coyotes are the reason for you to feel like you do, mm -hmm. then there's more 
there's more to be looked into. Mm -hmm. And maybe next time you come here, next time I see you, you will you will be able to see that the coyotes are not the reason for how you feel yeah. and tell me what is. Then 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 it's a it's a different place and we can move on from there. But right now I would like for you to stay where you are and just stay, stay, stay. And I do understand. I so relate to that running that you're doing to avoid it. I really understand. So it's imagining entering the room and the room is as the room is. Mm -hmm. And there's just a lot of sadness coming up when you enter the room and that's how it is. Can you do a guiding on that? It's one of these things where I completely agree with what you said mm -hmm. about it being this is one of those things where we, we cross uh, shaky territory between working just with um, resistance and uh, aversion to like you said trying to bypass just natural emotions and the naturally occurring uh, stages of grief so I don't know, as I would say, to do too much with this right now. I think the one thing, if it's really problematic, you know, and you do want to try the kind of fifth fetter style um, inquiry into it, is just when you walk into the room, you say that you're there. And the first thing you say is, I don't want this. Right there, stop. And what is it in that situation that you do not want? There is something there, check into the body, see what that very first thing is that you feel that is um, unbearable, that you do you take to be, I don't want this thing. Because everything after that is then layers and layers that you're piling on to make it even worse. So come back to whatever that first thing is that hits as soon as you enter the room and become aware of it and then see in the gap, if you know that's going to be your gap for this, to see if you can sit with whatever it is that just spontaneously arises without any stories, without thoughts of coyotes, without thoughts of the other cat, without thoughts of you know her missing or any stories about how much you loved her or any of those things added on. Just what is here the second that you walk into the room that immediately triggers the reaction, I don't want this and just sit with whatever that was and notice if there is a push to escape to think other things to condemn coyotes to you know beat yourself up about something about uh you know any of the different ways that we divert just become aware of all of those and come back to sitting with just that sensation and see if whatever initially comes up is really as unbearable as it seems to be when you say, I need to, you know, I can't have this. I, I, I have to, I don't want this. Um, but again, sorry, I, I just, I, I, I don't want you to use that as a way to bypass emotions going forward. That was, forward. that was actually my, yeah, because the, exactly. the, the, the lachmus test of this one is that you can enter the room and say, I do want this. Yeah. I do want this. I yeah. do want this feeling because there's something here that, that is relevant and needs your attention and it might not be about the cat no. it might be about something else underneath but this is opening up um to what to what to something that needs your attention yeah yeah i agree completely but but be kind with yourself and you know again it's something that we all go through and it's something that we are going to um, all experience in various forms. And it's, it's just being okay with that, you know, being, being able to just experience it as weather patterns that move through the body 
They're just these emotional weather patterns that come through. And it's not something that we have to push away or vilify or get super attached to. And that's what we're working with. Um, yeah. Thank yeah. And also in my, in my optics, um, a very important part about the fifth feather is also to turn it around and see that I do want this. Yeah. Because we tend to get blind on all the things we don't want. Then we say that I want the opposite, mm -hmm. but that's just another way of, of saying that I don't want this. Mm -hmm. So a way to really look into what this is, is to say, I do want this. I do want to get yelled at. I do want <laughs> to, um, yeah, whatever comes up. It's a great way to work with the fifth. Does that help at all? Is it useful, Kristen? I'm not. Yeah, I can't. I really can't tell that. Like, I don't know that I believe that I'm bypassing because the primary thing that's there that I didn't do to, it's like, I didn't, not, I don't know that I did any of it, but what, what is primarily there is like I think I said this before is expansion. Could you could I could could I ask you to finish the sentence that you started? I did not what? Did I say I did not? Yeah. I did not. The primary thing that is there is expansion. Like when I you know, I'm kind of describing, like, I'll go in and out, like the, the first, you know, the first days were all emotion, just emotion, 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 emotion. And then as I sat more and more and more and more, did emote less. Um, so it kind of just comes in waves, but now what's primarily there yeah is this it's just a sense of expansion and it doesn't feel like it's pushing anything away it doesn't feel almost like it can't push anything away. Something like this. That's why I say like, I'm not doing this. It's not like I'm saying, okay, expand, expand, expand. It's, there's no director here in that. It's just when, yeah, it's just there um, in this situation, like walking into the room or just thinking about her. Um, yeah. So I can't tell. Oh, wow. Is that, I mean, if I were to put a word on it, other than expansion, I might say, you know, I might, I, I don't know, might say, heart opening, like how to describe it. It's hard to describe it other than expansion, heart opening, acceptance, maybe. Um, I just want to clarify too. So that comes up after you have sat with the. Um, no, it's like here right now. Oh, it's here right now, and and, oh, and yeah. immediately the thought of going into the room, and all of that is does it come up immediately still, or do you still get that I don't want this? Uh, it's like that. I don't want this. Almost as like a phantom. It's a phantom. Like, do I really not want this? Because there's this expansion that doesn't go with this. Like, it's like the contraction. Is it? It's like as if it were. It. it it's like a a remnant of a contraction that's not even there. 
maybe I could describe it that way. Um, when I walk into the room, I mean, I'm in the room right now. <laughs> <laughs> the other cat's right there. Huh? The other cat. The other, the other cat. cat. Poor other cat. <laughs> I, I feel like yeah. yeah I would say leave it and okay. and re look 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 back to to this recording and and the pointers that we did and see if it's useful for you to you know turn the kaleidoscope a bit on it um yeah 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 because I mean, it's great to to be in that that sort of heartfelt or heart opening, expansive place with it. Um, also, noticing as you did that you know there's no the reactivity has no no of no bearing on the sensations that come before. That there's nothing that you can do that is going to affect what those sensations are. They just mm -hmm. are there. So that's all really, really. Um, mm -hmm. uh, great insight yeah useful um, yeah super okay. useful insight um the only thing that that when you say that there's um that the i i don't uh i don't want this is like you know it's like like a remnant or um kind of like a phantom thought it's still a thought if it's coming up mm. and it's probably still because there is something underlying it that's not being felt or is is not really being um accepted or loved or wanted mm -hmm. to be there so i would just say keep doing what you're doing then you know go back check this out but then also anytime that phantom comes up just be really aware of if there is something else that is underlying it something else that is causing that that you know phantom to need to be see, seems like that that phantom thought needs to be there otherwise why is it there and and yeah and and a way to do that is to to re-listen to this part again where you just put yourself in meditation position or you enter the room while we talk about it so you so you can practice it while you're doing it or do both and see what what the kaleidoscope is bringing up when you're looking at it from a different angle thank you good. Right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. good um eric you had your hand up now it's down do you still have a Oh, I, I'm not sure I had my hand up. I was probably moving a mosquito out of the way. <laughs> oh, no, the, the you, I, I swear I saw a little, you know, like a little uh, zoom hand on your thing. Maybe I'm mistaken. Oh. It's, I could have, I could have completely hallucinated that little hand up in the corner. It's entirely possible. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I find this whole, whole thing interesting about, um, feeling versus trauma mm. because I, I i feel like is there really a difference you know you feel something because of a, a trauma traumatic situation or you just feel and you don't think of it anything more than just like um a thought is a thought a feeling is a feeling and you experience them, but you don't hold on to it. And I don't know. I don't know. Is there really a difference? Yeah, that um, there can be a difference. And it was what I talked about before that if you have, when something happened to you, and and it's a traumatic experience, then we we experience it, and we put a lot of post its to describe what happened we tend to then use the same post-its as the starting point of what happened and that that removes us from what actually happened and that's the problem with memories that none of us remembers anything about anything 
We only remember the story that was told about what happened. And it's that story, those post-its that was used to describe what happened that we build on. So having a traumatic, for example, let's say you're driving on the highway and another car comes crashing in to you from the side. That story will be the first time you tell the story, a lot of post-its are going to be put on that story. Those post-its are now what is built on. So 20 years later, when you tell about the accident, you will be using exactly the same words, almost as if it's rehearsed, mm -hmm. because we are only describing the post-its on it. And those every single post-it, every single post-it has a feeling attached to it. So what we're doing is that we look at the post-it and that is the thought. You evoke the feeling in your body. So you're sitting and driving in your car on the highway. It's just before the other car is heading you. That feeling, if you have experienced that, will be present right away because you have the fear. You know what is going to happen. What we do then is that we detach the post-it and just sit with that fear you know what is going to happen and just sit with that fear because the post-it is not attached to it anymore. You allow that feeling, that sensory experience to be different. You allow it to move and to change and to go from being a knot in the stomach where you're slightly nauseated into moving about in the body and being something completely different because there's no longer the post-it attached to it that is limiting the experience. So that's why I'm very keen on looking into trauma and very keen on, on focusing on tra traumatic experiences that we have had because we are so fixated when it comes to trauma. We're so fixated to knowing, I know how I feel when I think about this. But, but you don't. You know what the post-it says and what the post-it ev evokes in you, in your body. That you know because you've been doing that over and over and over and over. But as soon as you allow yourself to detach the post-it, sit with the sensory experience and allow that to develop, then a trauma is released. Just by doing that, the trauma is released. Well, I guess I, I don't know even why to release it, it's just part of you. Was it a question? <laughs> you, need to, know, you need to ask a I, question. Well, I would say, do, yeah, do I, you feel like it's, it's beneficial to release trauma for a reason, or is it okay that it's just there as part of you for... But it's only part of you because you're maintaining. When... when uh, if you, I, you know, for, for that's, that, that's the, the yeah, part so, I don't really quite get. It's just like um, I know if I um, I had a cat that died last year, and you know it was really really upsetting, and I can get into that feeling of it, but I don't I don't feel like I I I want to not have that feeling. You know I feel like. That's just part of living, part of, you know, I I almost, I don't want to not have that feeling. I don't feel like I suffer from that feeling. I feel like it's just my feeling. And it's like that that thing with my son. I, I don't, I don't have a feeling like I don't want to feel this. I'm, I'm happy with feeling it. Yeah, and and in that there can be an attachment. If if you have if you have had an experience that gave you a feeling that made you view life in a different way or become wiser or anything, then we tend to believe that is the attachment. Or no, we tend to believe that is the post that that happened with the experience that is important. It's not. You can release the post it. You can sit with the feeling and allow the feeling to become, because a feeling is just, you know, 
a sensory experience with a post-it. So you can detach the post-it, sit with the feeling and allow the feeling to become a sensory experience where it has it's not attached to anything with your son or your cat. Yeah, I I guess what I feel is just like something coming out of me. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't have a I don't feel like I'm there is a post that it's just a feeling. It's just a um, you know, I I know that the first time I, when I lost the cat, the feeling first came out. But if it comes out when I, um, have a memory about him, I feel like it. It's just a friend that came back. Um, I'm, I'm not totally sure I would want to lose that. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, I was, it, feel free to, you know, disagree or jump in with anything else. If you, what I was just going to say is that, um, again, you know, it's, we're not trying to snuff out those emotions. There's something very beautiful about that. The only the way that that, from my perspective, would interact with what we're doing here and with fetter inquiry and that sort of thing is if you're noticing that those are creating a sense of a story that it's like you feel like so for one thing if you feel like you are um giving up part of your your history part of your narrative because these have been oh. formative moments for you because this has been you know this is part of my my scrapbook of my life, basically. So now there's identification there with it. It's not just a spontaneous arising of emotion given a certain circumstance. It's this has a lot of meaning. This has a lot of personal attachment to it. So that's one thing that can be looked into. The other mm -hmm. is if there is... Um, um, Oh wait, sorry. I lost. There, there was there was a so <laughs> yeah. On. yeah. Sorry, there there was another one there. Uh, give me a second for it to come back. But there was um. Yeah, I don't. Know. Sorry, I'm, I'm my my mind just drifted for a second. Uh, yeah, it, it'll come back to me. But but if you if you feel like um, if if there's attachment to it, if you feel like there's again any sense of of um oh right that's what it was if you feel like there is any sense of duty to holding on to these things also you know it might not be the same with mm -hmm. you know like like we sometimes feel like we're betraying our family betraying the memories of lost loved ones if we don't honor them by grieving for them every time the thought comes up or being happy about their joyful moments or whatever there's there's this feeling of guilt that we have if we don't do what we think is the societally appropriate thing of honoring their memory in a way which we have learned is the appropriate way of honoring a memory which is grieving feeling sad feeling loss all of that if, if it's a spontaneous thing that's that's perfectly fine but just recognize if it comes with recognize if you are uh holding back from letting go of it because you, there is a certain amount of guilt that i feel like it would be shameful for me to do that i feel like that person or that animal deserves to be remembered in this way and all of that because those are, are added levels of um of identification and uh and well post-its as you put yeah, it and, on top and, of it and then i also just want to add that as soon as we are in, into the area of guilt that for example i had a dog that i absolutely loved and every time i think of her i get a feeling of guilt yeah. right away i could have done more i could have done better and that is not about my dog that's about my um uh, what's it called um uh, my starting point it's about my uh, conditioning my my cultural conditioning it's about my family conditioning that i have mm -hmm. this feeling of guilt no matter what i do i could always do better 
I could always improve. I can always. So when I when I experience a loss of of my dog, immediately that bruise in me that is my starting point is being poked. Mm -hmm. And every time I think of her, that is being poked. And I can I can um I can differentiate between the guilt that I feel and the sadness that I feel for her not to be here anymore. And then when I I am aware that the guilt I feel, that's just conditioning, so I can put that aside, then I'm just sitting and going like, oh, I really loved her. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing more in it. It becomes more pure just because I'm I'm aware of, Mm -hmm. I have this very, very strong conditioning in me that will always be my primary. But for me just to be with that and accept that is how it is to be me i'm always feeling guilty about something mm-hmm. then then i then i can kind of like allow that to be there and be happy about my dog yeah i i thought that way about my cat because i felt like if i had just kept her inside you know everything would have been okay but i i think that is really the the small part of it the big part of it was that you know, I just enjoyed her. I missed her. Him. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was just um, such fun to be with. Um, watching her antics and um, the funny and weird but, things that she does. But Todd really had an important one that I also want just to emphasize for everyone that we have that we have that idea that the story we create about something is is like cement, cementing our mm-hmm. identification of an I, of I having a life mm-hmm. lived and I have, you know, I love my dog or my cat or my family or my auntie or whatever, you know, I really loved it. And, and, mm-hmm. and maintaining a story about that and an attachment to that story is kind of making uh-huh. it more real. Yeah, and that's that's worth looking at. I, I, yeah, I, I, I can see that. Yeah. Ironically, we can't see you. Your camera just. Um, <laughs> yeah, my battery is um okay, is almost out, and so it's going into low power mode. I guess um, okay. I'll have to go and get it. Um, hook, plug it into a um, a wire. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, Suni, you have your hand up? Yes, I do. Um, it's actually because um, when you talk about detaching, and det- I mean, it is so close for me, like when I feel that if I am to detach, I post it on a sensation in the body, I feel so uncertain that I'm actually just bypassing. Yeah. I don't really know if it is hard for me to distinguish. I have this feeling that I'm just bypassing things. And I get that. Do you want to go? Can you give a specific example? Would you like to to talk through an example? It's, it, but it's more like if if. If there is a sensation in the body, let's say a knot in the stomach or a lump in the throat, and then it arises because of something that you you something that I think about uh, a certain emotion that is really attached and deep seated, and but when I then in my head say that I just need to detach the post it because I recognize some of the feeling. And and then I have I have the feeling, but my head is saying I need to detach it from what I f- think that it is. Then maybe it's just my ego that is going in and saying you're probably bypassing. Don't do this. I'm I'm uncertain. What is it that is happening? I feel like it depends on the situation as far yeah. as. That's why I asked for if if we could have a specific example because coming back to the sensation in the body without the 
let me restart that. So are, are any thought that we have about the thing, any, any label, post it, whatever, that's all completely mind me, mind created. That is all secondary to our actual experience. Our actual experience in the moment all the time is only whatever is arising uh, in, you know, in direct experience in one of the sense fields. And so if you're feeling a knot in the stomach and tingling tension, that's all that you're experiencing. All of the thoughts about the labels and the possible, you know, then then the 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 second layer of thought that comes in and says, well, maybe I should be doing this thing, maybe I shouldn't be doing this thing. All of that is stepping us even further away from your actual experience of what's mm -hmm. happening, which is just a sensation in the body, which is neither good nor bad, positive nor negative, liked nor not liked. It's just what's occurring. And it's completely without without self, without attachment, without identification, without, you know, perspective. It is just a thing that is occurring in an experience. So the question is, when are you using it in terms of that you feel, can, can you give a suggestion or a situation that you've used it in where you felt like you were bypassing? Yeah, because I'm, I'm sitting and thinking that, that, it could very well be that you are very present in your body and feeling the sensation in the body and the thought this is bypassing could actually be bypassing. It could be a reaction to sitting with something that's uncomfortable. That's yeah, true. yeah. That's and the true. ego goes like, no, 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 no. That's this true. is bypassing. Yeah. You should yeah. stop doing this. You should stop doing this. Yeah. And that is the bypassing. Yeah, because I thought about that as well, but very often it's um it's so triggered by emotions mm. um and yeah go, go, but go, i also go yeah yeah go on yeah give an example well an example is sitting here and i think one of the first said that fear was like a ground feeling and it's like instantly i feel my own shame mm. And it is so overwhelming. Mm. Um, but then I try to feel my shame and I say that it is it is a feeling and how does it feel? And then, okay, if I'm not... It just feels so dangerous and not dangerous, but it feels so <laughs> uncomfortable to so if I were to lose my entire story. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think that is it. That's yeah. a good one. You go. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the fear, the fear of losing the entire story. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. So it's a big one. And it's, 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 <laughs> I mean, you're not the only one with that one. I can tell you. No, absolutely not. Um, God. Okay, so, so, I mean, you went through a few different layers of things getting to that point, All right? So you started with that there was uh, shame that came up, and then there was this, um, so the 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 fear. I'm, I'm trying to. Oh, okay. I. Um. I'm trying to get a feel actually whether that that what you brought up the fear of losing the story is actually a base level fear or is that something that's also deflecting from the shame that you were just feeling because it's for the way you brought it up can can you go more into that a little bit it is only coming from the shame mm. it is not fear yeah i don't feel fearful i feel perfectly safe when I'm in the moment and when I'm looking and, and when I'm I do know that I feel safe where I am and and that I'm safe in my world etc but um, it is shame it is uh, shame combined with um, a feeling of of not being worthy enough to take the space that I hold Yeah, that is 
That's a huge one. Um, I'm, send, I'm sending you so much. Yeah, I'm sending you so much love. I'm sending you so much love. The 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 problem with, like I said, with guilt and with shame and and with those like base feeling that we have been has been instilled in us from such a such a young age that we can't even verbalize what happened, but it's just the baseline of who we are and how we view the world is that that becomes the starting point. So you have a starting point of I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. I can be enough if I only, and then we do, 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 to, to get to that point where we are okay and are enough. Um, that is more about staying with that. Okay, I'm not enough. If we say that is true, then I'm just staying here and I'm not enough and I'm creating space to not being enough. I'm creating space to be um, inadequate and creating space to be lesser than the rest. And you don't build on it with more post-its. You just stay with that. You stay with that little part of you, the little, the little girl in you that was had that instilled in her. And you just stay there and stay there and stay there. And if you don't build on it, very, very soon it will start to be deflated because it can only be maintained by thought. So it can yeah. only be maintained by adding another post-it, go see, see, see. Remember what happened today at work? See, <laughs> I told you. that can it, 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 The feeling of being inadequate and the feeling of shame can only be maintained by thought. Um. Yeah. 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 You want to? Well, and just so going back to your original question, then, is it really a fear that you are bypassing from shame, or is that? Do you think now that that was really just a the the fear of or the thought of bypassing was itself a way of bypassing and getting away from actually sitting with the discomfort yeah i think it is yeah good yeah good good Thank shame you. away <laughs> shame away <laughs> i will and i guess we we do distinguish right so between the the base level um starting point you know uncomfortable things like fear anger guilt and shame that are there and versus you know regular spontaneous emotions that come up throughout the day that we're not trying to bypass all of the the human emotions as we call them that that come out but these things like these these basic starting points that are controlling all of our decisions throughout the day and reframing absolutely everything and experience uh, from this completely colored uh, lens. That is something that it's not bypassing to sit with it, mm -hmm. accept it and allow it to just evaporate on its own without giving it constantly more and more fuel by, by thinking about it and buying into it. So kind of, we are kind of dismantling that as a fundamental starting point. Mm. Um, but that's not the kind of bypassing that we are doing when we just, you know, don't like feeling sad throughout the day. And so, you know, use that so that we never have to feel, you know, an emotion come up or feel like, you know, cause then, then we are, we are pushing against, um, a, just a spontaneously arising brief uh, mm. emotion, mm. you know, and, and vilifying something that is just a, a spontaneous happening. Um, this is, this is a much deeper sort of intensive mm. um, trauma re uh, what's the word? I'm like, like, yeah, like re re reformulating. reformulating yeah. Yeah. But, but, and that's also where, where the second feather is important to really spend time with that and and look into it like Sunni was doing like becoming aware yeah. that there is an underlying feeling of shame it's happening all the time every single time just like i have with guilt that it's happening all the time and it it doesn't take much for that to be activated 
and then we tend to believe that because it, it doesn't take much that I am inadequate. You know, I am shameful. You know, see the proof because it's happening all the time. But but in reality, it's just because it's a baseline. So it's just it's it's one of those things that we very easily recognize. You know, if you start to look at only green cars, then there's going to be so many green cars all of a sudden because it's just just what we what we tend to focus on when it comes up. Yeah. So so knowing what the baseline is for you, Sunny, knowing that it is shame, and whenever it comes up, it's just like an old friend. Oh, here you are. Okay, <laughs> I'm still here. I still love you. You're welcome to be here. You know. And and just knowing this is just a starting point. It's nothing else. It's just a starting point. Yeah. It's just a trauma. <laughs> right. Does does anyone else have um anything? We 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 said that these are gonna be about an hour and a half, which is where we are. I mean, if somebody has something pressing they'd like to bring up um before we wrap up, we'd be happy to do that. And also not pressing. Yeah, also not somebody pressing. has something non-pressing. Non-pressing. But want to bring it up? That's also very welcome to do that. Something. Something. I guess, uh, my non-pressing thing is I noticed the overall motif of this particular session seemed to be emotions. Yeah. And our stories to the emo uh, that we have on the emotions. And that's where the stuckness is happening, as as, as Pernella says, the post-its. That's all. I was like, I was like, oh, this, you know, the next person's is all about emotions today, which I guess goes back to the first fetter, because that again makes us um create a self. That there's a me here that's having mm. this experience. But it's it's also it's also what is happening when we do inquiry. Because it's so it's so direct looking into what to what we have we've been stopped in our tracks for something. And that is always about a thought or about emotions. So inquiry always comes to this point. Always, always. Because that is the only thing that can stop us. We we're, we're we're not we're, we're not stopped in our track by flow. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so so when we do inquiry, it's always like this. It's very, very direct and super super quick brought into the exact point of what it is and that's why it's useful for everybody to hear because practicing that over and over and over to go straight to the point this is what it's about and then looking at that and detaching the thought from the sensation doing that over and over and over in your everyday life it just makes it yeah, yeah, more efficient and quicker I guess, and, I guess my question was because I'm so new to the federal work is this is that does that fall kind of more into the first fetter? No. I haven't even, I'm just about to start looking yeah. at the second fetter. Yeah. And so, it, and I know you say that your things kind of cross over. Like, I like your explanation, Pernella, that things aren't in these little, you know, boxes. There's, it's more nebulous than that because, yeah. and, and I experience it that, that way. But anyway. But, but the way, um, the way that we, that we work today, we have addressed, First second, first feather issues, second feather issues, um, fourth and fifth feather issues, seventh feather issues. A hint of the ninth with a the hint uh, of the ninth, with, yeah. yeah, with the uh, uh, impermanence and yeah. yeah, we didn't really go into that, but yeah. So so it's it's just when you do inquiry, this is this is what you do, this is okay. what you do, yeah. Okay, and Pernella, you're you know just I'm I, like I said, I'm just starting your playlist for second feather this week and I guess you'll be and I, I saw you had a couple of things up for third fetter so you're gonna continue yes to add to your playlist. Okay. Yes, yes to all ten fetters. Yes. And I also saw that Todd had some playlists. Yeah. His his, his yeah, are a little yes. different, but he has some one on ones on first fetter that I might go back and listen to. And I did do the Liberation Unleash online thing and I was able to just you know see through, but then old conditioning is hasn't completely disappeared here it's slowly sure. dissolving yeah and also now when you go into the second fetter what we talked about with fear anger guilt and shame that's part of the second fetter yeah so just real quick because i know we're at time limit we're, we're, right. the last person was talking a lot about shame and i was like hmm you know because shame's real common in our society and the only thing i can get is like it's a story because there's a feeling in the body usually we feel it in the body and then there's this big story with it 
or that's the way I experience it. You know, when I have the anger or the guilt, now the anger is a little bit harder for me because man, that story can get really, you know, like <laughs> I'm right, they're wrong, uh -huh. but shame a little bit more passive for me. And so I'm, I'm really able to see that as this is just a contraction. There's two contract contractions for me. There's the middle contraction when I'm focused on something, but then there's the physical body contraction or my, my whole being system. And I'm like, Oh, okay. I've stopped being, I've stopped being who and what I really am when I contract a lot of times because there's a stuckness, a stickiness to it. Mm. So to me, shame, I'm starting to see it in experiences as a contraction in the body and then the story. And that's real. That's all I'm getting. I can't find anything else. Yeah. Look, look into it when, when you get to the federal work and then remember mm -hmm. not on this Friday, but next Friday, uh, I have the Q and a, if you have got questions about, about the curriculum. So from where we're sitting right now, today's Tuesday, the next meeting is Vince's meeting on Sunday. Um, you can find his email in the chat. It's also going to be in the description below. Mm -hmm. Next week, it's going to be uh, the Q&A on Friday. Yeah. And uh, then Vince's meeting Sunday. And then we meet again Tuesday is the week after. 17th, so so there, there's a lot of you for you to do there are lots of groups yeah. to be part of and a lot I, 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 I want to thank everybody for sharing today i found it very yeah, uh, yeah amazing very yeah. especially the cat stories i'm a cat person <laughs> <laughs> it's very sad i have to say i don't see anything in the chat at all regarding okay. meetings or anything i don't okay. either okay is... no, oh. but, oh, put... here let me let me i think you know what happens i think if you post it too early it doesn't hold on a second let me uh repost because i had posted it i think before i let everybody in and uh in meeting group chat i am reposting it thank you thank you um sorry about that I also want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you so much. Sorry. Thank you so much for 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 sharing. Absolutely. This is it's it's been so enjoyable. Yeah. Okay. It's been so enjoyable. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, we look forward to seeing you uh next time. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Right. Thanks everyone. Have a great <laughs> couple of weeks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.